Shalom every day. Shalom everybody. Peace unto everybody watching. First off, let me give all honor, glory, and praise to the Most High God Yahweh in the name of His Son Yahweh Shah. I'm here to magnify His name, and I give like to give a strong, strong, strong shalom to all the, all the brothers out there laboring, magnifying the Lord's name, doing what they're supposed to do, keeping the commandments, and truth and sincerity, putting the nation on their back to do what they can to get us out of this captivity. I'd like to give a strong shalom to all the sisters out there. Uh, magnifying the Lord's name, being as righteous as they possibly can, you know what I'm saying, and doing everything they can to keep the commandments to the best of their ability. Strong shout out warm to you brothers and sisters out there fulfilling the will of the Father, you understand? And today's uh, lesson is going to be on unity. Now, my last video, I touched on it a little bit, but I want to go in depth because the most I put it on my spirit to kind of just be dwelling and meditating on these precepts on unity. And how beautiful it is for brothers to dwell in unity in the Most High's name, magnifying His name. You understand? It's a very beautiful thing, right? Because you know our people, our nation. How are we ever going to rise as a nation? How are we ever going to rise together when we're stuck divided? It's going to take action us as a nation for us to come together in order for us to rise. You understand? So, hey, we're gonna let the Lord talk. As usually, we're going to go through these precepts and we're going to rightly divide the word of truth. You understand? And hey, we're going to dive into this unity. Right? So, let's start off with the book of Psalms, chapter 133, and verse 1. Behold, how good and how pleasant is it for brethren to dwell in unity. How good and how pleasant is it for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's a very beautiful thing, even in the Lord's eyes. Brothers dwelling together in unity is as that lily. The Lord's favorite flower. It says that frankincense and mirth. The Lord's favorite scent. Right? Brothers to dwelling together in unity and sincerity and truth is as beautiful as that dove. That harmless, beautiful dove without a blemish. You understand? This is a very beautiful thing in the eyes of the Most High. Hey, it's a commandment for us to gather ourselves together and to dwell in unity. You understand? That's a commandment for us, even as a nation. It should already be on our spirit to do so, right? Because you see, like as as time has gone on, as time has gone on from slavery, even before slavery, we have been divided amongst each other. You know what I'm saying? We've been fighting. We've been known for killing each other, uh, and it's not always by the gun. It can be by music. It can be by your words that you speak against your brother. In various ways. You understand? And, hey, it's going to take action. It's not going to just take me hopping in front of this camera, you know, going through the precepts, talking about unity. It's going to take action. You know what I'm saying? I'm just here as a vessel to magnify the Lord's name, to exhortate you, to unify with your brothers in the name of the Most High. You understand? I'm not talking about no folly today. I'm not talking about um, getting together to do your worldly activity, right? So let's go to the book of Genesis. Chapter 13, and we really got to love each other. The Lord and I say, uh, love you. We're going to get in there today. Uh, this is the book of Genesis, chapter 13, and verse 8. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my, and between, and between my, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren. You understand? So this is the kind of, uh, at, this is the kind of mindset you got to have towards your brothers. You don't want to have no strife towards your brothers. You should always have that mindset. It's going to be like, okay, I'm going to be the big man. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to talk this out. We're going to hash this out the right way. You know what I'm saying? We're going to go into that too. We're going to hash this out the right way. And we're going to come together, brother. Hey, we brothers. We the same nation. How can we hate each other? If I'm hating you, I got hate in my heart. Hey, what the Lord say about me hating, having hate in my heart? Right? That's not what you want to have. You got to love your brother as yourself, right? Now, let, let's let's let the Lord talk. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. And, hey, that precept is going to be key as we keep going. You all, you should always want to be um, putting aside these differences. You understand? And like I was going, I'm going to bring this out again. Because I brought this out in my last video. But, hey, you got to realize why we have the, why we think the way we do. You got to realize why we go through what we go through. You understand? You have to realize these things and realizing that is going to help you conquer it. Right? You got to realize the problem. You got to analyze the whole problem 
you can guys sit back and be like, okay, so this is here. Okay, so if I do this, and I, you know, brothers that do this, and then the Most High, he might let it play out that way. Okay, the Most High told me this. Okay, right. That's how we're going to do it, right? It's the same thing with us as a nation. It's the same thing with these scriptures. It's the same. It's everything is on a spiritual level. You understand? So let's, let's analyze the problem. Hey, and I'm going to keep bringing this out because this is one of the top curses that our people go through. What we're about to read is a curse. Deuteronomy 28 and 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil toward his brother. And toward the and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. Right. So this is the curse that our people continue to go through. Right. We are probably the. It's not probably. We are the number one nation on this earth that are divided against each other. Right. And so, the point I wanted to bring out of this is that we gotta realize that this is the problem that we're going through. You understand? We gotta realize that this is the problem. Okay, we got to come up with some solutions. Okay, we got to come up with solutions. How do I be the bigger person in these situations? Right? How do I benefit my nation? How do I do what I can do to be pleasing in the most high's eyes to unify my brethren? You understand? Let's go to the book of First Corinthians 6. Mighty chapter, mighty chapter. First Corinthians 6 and 1, and it reads, Dare any of you having a manner against a brother Go to the law before the unjust and before not the saints. Right. So what Paul is saying, well, what the Lord is saying through Paul is, is if you, if me and you have a problem, right? The proper ways for us to go about this would be to come to these scriptures. If it's not a God's scriptures, you're speaking out of your own belly presumptuously. And that's only going to continue to lead, to lead to your downfall. You understand? If it's not after the Lord... The Lord is going to continue have you to have. He's going to continue have you in a uh, stagnated place, a stagnated place, whether it's physically or spiritually. You understand? So, with that being said, once you have, a, if you have a a, a a problem with the brother, and you come to these scriptures, you don't come to the scriptures before the unjust. You come to the scriptures who to the men who apply the scriptures, right? Because that those those are the saints. Let's get there real quick. I'm gonna read it one more time. I'm going to link that up with uh, the classic. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints? Now, let's, let's read why you would want to go to the saints. Revelation 14 and 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Yahusha. Right? So this is why you would want to go to the saints because they're going to lead you in those right directions and paths, you understand, to they're gonna lead you in the right directions and path to do what you gotta do, right? They're not gonna tell you wrong. They're not gonna tell you presumptuously, presumptuously uh, uh, of their own belly. You understand? They're gonna tell you rightly divide the word of truth and be like, hey, this is what the Lord said. This would be the most wisest thing to do, right? And, and that's the count. That's the kind of counsel I want. That's the kind of counsel a wise man would want to be pleasing in the Most High's eyes. You're not, you wouldn't be a wise man if you kind of want to hear what you think is right, right? And you not, not even uh, uh, think about the most high and how he might think it, uh, it'll play out, right? Because either way, it's still going to play out according to the most high. But hey, a wise man will go to the saints. A wise man will come back to these scriptures so he can learn how to love his brothers. You understand? Now, let's read on. Do ye not know that the saints, the men who keep the commandments, shall judge the world and if the world shall be judged by you are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters right hey and this is a cut for you you know a lot of people say like to say you can't judge me who are you to judge me bit by bit all right let's prove it let's go to deuteronomy 25 and 1 this is you know no this is you know scriptures i say scriptures uh, one on one or two on two, right? You can judge according to the Bible, and we're gonna prove it through a couple of precepts. And if you think about it, that's the only just way to do it. If you have nobody to judge, you basically having everybody live lawlessly. You understand? Everybody kind of just doing what thou wilt, right? That's how you come up with private interpretations, right? That's how you come up with, okay, I think this, you think that, okay, I'm a, you know, that that comes up with division. When you have a judge that helps you build unity. 
with no judges you that that uh is the stem to division. That's why the Lord said this, Deuteronomy 25, and I'm going to read verse 1. If there be any controversy between men, and they came and they come unto judgment, that the judges may judge them, then they shall justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. Right? Um, right. So the, then you should justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. Right. And if you're not coming back to these scriptures, you're going to go to whatever you think is right and not even apply the scriptures. So a lot of the times you'll be justifying the wicked and condemning the righteous, which is an evil thing to do. You understand? That's why you have certain judges. That's why you had the spirit on certain brothers to give counsel. You understand? That's why you have the watchmen upon the gates and, uh, you know, upon the gates to go to for counsel. That's the reason. Right. That's why the Lord set up judges and magistrates over the cities and over our nation to get to keep us in unity to rightly divide the word of truth you understand let's go to second chronicles about these judges man because you got to be able to about you got to be able to humble yourself down and not be proud you know we're gonna go to that in a second too because that's another that's another demon that our people face that you like that's our people being proud that's a lot. That's a big part of the reason why we don't have no order, why we not together, because we proud. We don't know how to be the bigger man in certain situations. You understand? We don't know how to be the bigger person like we read in Genesis 13 and 8. We don't know how to be the bigger person and be like, hey, let's not have no strife towards each other. Let's come together and let's hash this out as men. Let's deep, let's have these scriptures. Let's see who really right, according to the Lord, according to the Lord. This is 2 Chronicles 19 and 5, and it reads, and he set judges in the land throughout all the fenced cities of Judah, city by city. You understand? I'm going to read that again. And he set judges in the land throughout all the fenced cities of Judah, city by city. And said to the judges, take heed what ye do. Ye judge not for man, but for the world who is with you in judgment. Right. So when you have a judge that's judging righteously according to the Lord. He's judging according to the Most High. You understand? Let's read it again. And it said to the judges, Take heed what you do, for ye judge not for man. Right? I'm not judging to get fame. I'm not judging so, you know, he might look at me different. So let me, uh, you know, kind of adhere to his words. So, I'll, so I'll, um, I don't have a bad image for him. No, man. You're not judging for man. Read on. And it reads, But for the Lord. Who is with you in the judgment, right? Did the not did the Lord not put a strong spirit of judgment on Solomon, right? Like you read in First Kings. You know what? Let's get that real quick. That's a spirit. Let's get that real quick. Let's get that real fast. This is what judgment will do for you, right? Um, um let's see, because I want to sum up the chapter. Um. Let's start at 1 Kings chapter 3, and I'm going to read verse number uh, 22. And the woman, and the other woman said, okay, I'm going to start at 21. And when I rose in the morning to give my child suck, behold, it was dead. So you have one woman, right? Her child is dead. Read on. But when I had considered it in the morning, behold, it was not my son, which I did bear. And the other woman said, Nay, but the living is my son, and the dead is thy son. And this said, No, but the dead is thy son, and the living is my son. Thus they spake for, before the king. Right, so just like we went to in Deuteronomy 25 and 1, which is the law on how to judge righteously between a righteous and a wicked, you have one woman here, she's righteously telling the truth about this living son that's hers, and you have one wicked woman, who has a dead child that's trying to claim the living child, right? And if you read up, uh, if you read up in this chapter, right, Solomon prayed before the Lord that he would give him the spirit of wisdom, right? So he can judge his nation because he was a he was a king, right? You should know about Solomon, right? Righteous king for the most part, right? And let's see what Solomon did, right? So you see that you see the situation. You got one woman, she's wicked, and she's trying to claim the kid, right? Trying to claim the baby. Right? And you got one righteous woman. Her her kid is living. And she's like, hey, she's trying to claim my baby. You understand? Her baby's dead. 
Now let's see what Solomon did though, right? This is the spirit of judgment. Because when you judging somebody going right, righteously dividing the word of truth, the Lord is with you. You understand? And we're going to go back to that in Second Chronicles. And the king said, divide the living child in two and give half and give half to the one and half to the other. Right, so a picture this. Say, uh, say I'm Solomon, right? And you got two women over there. And he's like, you know what? Give me the baby. We're going to divide the baby in two. Since y'all can't stop arguing and tell the truth, we're going to divide it in two. I'm going to give one half to you and one half to you and both. Right? That's what he said. Then spake the woman whose the living child was unto the king, for her bowels yearned upon her son. And she said, oh, my Lord, give me the living child. And in no wise slay it, but the uh, but the other said, "Let it be neither mine nor thine, but then the body." Right. So who the child, the child's actual mom, she was like, "Oh no!" Right. She kind of slid on her knees. Right. Kind of like uh, the Call of Duty joint when you running and you slide on your knees. She kind of did one of them. It was like, "Oh Lord, no, no, no! This is my living child." Right. This is my living child. And the other woman, the wicked woman, right. She was just like, uh, she was just like, hey, it is what it is. You know, if it don't let it be mine, don't let it be hers. So she want, you know, she's lying. She don't really care about that kid. It's not her kid, right? So what Solomon do? He was about to cut this baby in half, trusting, putting his full trust in the Lord that he would that he would put the spirit on a, on a woman that's telling the truth to a hey, to you know yearn for her son, right? And the Lord surely put it in the other woman's spirit to hey, just stand there not care right she was lying right but the point is that this when you have judges judging according to the most high the most high is going to have it play out for you right and that's going into faith like i put uh, like i pulled out my first video that's going into faith right when you go into these certain men that can give you counsel right counsel to according to the most high you got to have faith in that counsel why because the most high set him up to know these scriptures divided to to be able to counsel you and your brother you understand that's the proper way to hash out matters. Not Instagram beef, not Instagram live, not, you know, texting this baby mother, trying to head out of her, you know what I mean, get back on them, whatever it might be. You know what I mean? It's to go to the judges, but it's, it's to go to the judges that the most high set up who can rightly divide the word of truth. Right? And have faith in that counsel and not be like, man, he, you know what I mean, he this don't mean nothing. He kind of just reading the Bible. What do I care about that for? That's wicked. That's wicked. You know what I'm saying? This you supposed to have faith in that counsel that that righteous man is gonna give you. You understand? Have faith in that counsel, no matter if you don't like him, the way he look, the way he talk. You know what I mean? The, whatever. If the Lord set up a counselor who can literally divide the rightly work, rightly divide the word of truth, you you are to have faith in that counsel. This is how we unify. This is how we love our brethren. This is how we put our pride to the side. We have counsel and we love our brothers. Now, let's read this one more time. Second Chronicles 19 and 6. And say to the judges, Take heed what ye do, for ye judge not for man, but for the Lord, who is with you in judgment. Now, wherefore, now let the fear of the Lord be upon you. And that's the key, right? It's the fear of the Lord. So, the, hey, this, is, this applies to every scenario, right? For that man that don't want to uh, take heed to the counsels of the Lord, uh, to the counsel of, of the wise men who are going to rightly divide the word of truth, hey, you're not fearing the Lord, right? You're not fearing the Lord's judgment, so you want to go whatever path you want to go to to go contrary to it, to do what you feel is comfortable, right? And for that righteous man, right, you go to that righteous man, rightly dividing the word of truth for counsel, hey, because you fear the Lord's judgment, right? You fear the Lord's judgment, right? And that judgment is not always just when you die, you go wherever you think you're going to go. That judgment is on earth, too. The Lord has set up various strange calamities throughout these scriptures. The Lord can do whatever he want. You understand? Hey, that's the key part. I'm going to read it again. Wherefore, not now let the fear of the Lord be upon you. Take heed and do it. For there is no iniquity with the Lord our God, nor respect of persons, nor taking of gifts. You understand? And that's a very, very key part. There's no respect of persons with the Lord. There's no respect to persons with the Lord. So the Lord don't care if you got uh you got a couple more Instagram followers than the next brother. You know what I mean, so he might kind of spare you because you can 
and do this better than him. The Lord don't care about that. There's no respect of persons when you judge them. You have one man that's going to be righteously right. You're going to have one man that's wicked and he's going off. You're going to have that one counselor amongst a thousand. You have that one counselor between them two brothers that help you hash out a matter. It's not. It's that simple. This is the way the Lord set it up righteously for our nation. And this is the way we got to go about it. You understand? Now, I'm going to get one more. I'm going to get one more example of how you righteously judge. How you righteously hash out matters between your brothers or between your sisters. Ezra 7 and 25. And thou, Ezra, after the wisdom of thy God that is in thy hand set so right. So what's the wisdom of God that's in your hand? You have the scriptures. You understand? You have the scriptures. This is the wisdom of God that's in your hand. Read on. Uh, and thou, Ezra, after the wisdom of thy God that is in thy hand, set magistrates and judges, which may judge all the people that are beyond the river. And if you read this account, these people that are beyond the river are, are angels. All such as know the laws of thy God and teach ye them that know them not. You understand? So this is the point, right? That um, you have to put your pride aside and allow certain men to write, rightly divide the word of truth. You understand? And judge you. You know what I'm saying? Judge you according to the most high judgment. Because like we just read in Second Chronicles, you don't judge for men. You judge with the fear of the most high on you. You understand? So you have to set. Let's get that. Let's get the classic. Classic. Cyrac. Cyrac 10. Right? Um, quick on the sword. Cyrac 10. And I'm going to read verse 13. Right. So this is a key part, right? And, uh... This is a key part also in um, bowing down your ear, right? Being that brother that can, you being that brother who's the biggest man, the bigger man in, the, in any uh, given situation, right? To avoid any strife between your brothers like we read in Genesis 13 and 8. And that's a mighty account. You got to read that whole chapter to kind of understand what's going on. That Genesis 13 and 8 is an example of how you should be carrying yourself with the love of the brothers. And it's saying, let there be no strife between us, brother. You're my brother. That's a mighty thing. Hey, brother, I don't want to beef with you. You know what I'm saying? We brothers, man. I ain't going for that. We got to stick together. All right? Let's read this. Uh, Cyrus 10 and 13. For, the pr for pride is the beginning of sin, and he that hath it shall pour out abomination. And therefore, the Lord brought upon them strange calamities. Right? So your pride... You not wanting to for, you forsaking the wise counsel of elders or even young men that can rightly divide the word of truth. That's going to be the beginning of your sin, right? Which eventually brings forth strange calamities. Hey, it's written, and you have sh various accounts of strange calamities. You understand? So you have to always put that pride aside and be able to adhere to wise counsel from brothers, elders, sisters, even sisters. Right? It don't matter. You should always be able to listen and hear that wise counsel. That's going to help you unify. That's going to build a certain love between you and that, and that counselor. You understand? Or this counsel and this stuff that I'm going to, putting your pride aside, is all a part of unity. You understand? It's all a part of unity. Let's read that one more time. For pride is the beginning of sin, and he that hath it shall pour out abomination. And therefore the Lord brought upon them strange calamities. And overthrew them utterly. You understand? So, I, I, I'm going to rest right there. But, hey, that that's mighty. No pride in Israel, man. No pride in thinking that this brother is not going to be able to give you some wise uh, instruction or some wise counsel. Because he don't look the way he, you know what I mean, you want him to look. Which is off anyway. Because he don't got as many uh, Instagram followers. Because he don't got five women on his side, on his phone. That he just texting for no reason. You understand? Let's go back to Second Chronicles. I kind of want to hop with Chronicles. You know, if you want to go on there, you kind of know what's going on. But hey, this is the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 10, and I'm going to read verse 6. All right, and this is a classic account too. All right? So Second Chronicles 10 and verse 6. And King Robom 
to, okay, I kind of got to get the, uh, kind of got to get the, uh, the, count, the, uh, the context. Um, let's see. All right, yeah, we start at six. Okay, so the the context before verse six is you have Robom, uh becoming the king, right? And you have the children of Israel who is being afflicted and hard labor. Essentially, they come to him and they're like, hey, man, you know what I'm saying? We're going through this bit by bit. Can you kind of uh, lighten the load, right? Can you kind of show us mercy? We're kind of going through everything. We're sweating. We, we, we're going through slavery, you know what I'm saying? And they're coming to him like, can you help us out, right? And the king said this. And he said to them, "Come again unto me after three days." And the people and the people departed. All right. So after they came to him, it was like, "Can you can you help us out?" He said, "Okay, depart from me three days, and I'm gonna figure it out." That's what he said, right? And now let's figure out what he did in these three days. And King Robom, uh, Second Chronicles ten and six. And King Robom took counsel with the old men. That had stood before Solomon, his father, while he yet lived. And we already read about Solomon. We get, we got, we got, that's the spirit. We got an account about Solomon, right? And how he was very wise. One of the wisest men. The, the wisest man to live aside from Yahweh Shah. Well, I'm a lot. You understand? And he, we got an account about how he could, he was able to righteously judge, right? According to the Most High, with the fear of the Most High in him. Right, so let's read about his son. I'm gonna read that again. Second Chronicles ten and six. And King Robom took counsel with the old men that had stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived, saying, "What counsel give ye me to return answer to this people?" Right, so he's got the same counselors that his fathers did, and he's like, "Man, what counsel you got me? Man, you old man, you washed up." That's what he's saying. That's pride, man. That's pride. Here it is. You got these elders with with a mighty rank, with all types of um, um, all types of um, skills that they've learned over time. It's a word that describes that sentence, but I can't think of it. Um, they got uh, we got these elders with the counsel of a certain rank, right? Experience. That's the word, right? You got here it is. You got these elders. With experience and counsel, right? And, and Royal Bomb is saying like, hey, whoa, why do I got to listen to you, man? You old and you washed up. That's pride. That's his mind. Like, hey, I'm, I don't need you. You understand? Read on. Second Chronicles 10 and 7. And they speak unto him, saying, if thou be kind to this people and please them and speak good words to them, they will be thy servants forever. But he forsook the counsel which the old men gave him. And took counsel with the young men that were brought up with him, that stood before him, right? So, hey, like I've been saying, what did he do? He forsake the counsel of the wise men, and he wanted to hear the counsel of the soothsayers who was going to tell him what he really wanted to hear at the end of the day. You understand? And that's not wise. That's not that's not um, adhering to wise counsel, you understand? And bowing down your ear and be humble and fear on the Lord for allow the unity of your people to come together, right? Uh, uh, um, being humble so you can unify with your brothers righteously with the fear of the Lord in your heart, right? And that is an account of how he did exact uh, uh, opposite of that, right? And we got an account of Solomon who did that to the T, right? Perfect, right? Now, let's go to Cyrus 37. This whole chapter is about counsel. Right, let's go to Cyrus 37 and 12. But be continually with a godly man, whom thou knowest to keep the commandments. Do we not read about the saints? Here's the faith and the patience of the saints, uh, them that keep the commandments and the faith of Yahweh Shah. Revelation 14 and 12. Right? So when you unifying with your brothers, you should be doing this. But be continually with a godly man, who thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. How can you go wrong? Answer me this. How can you go wrong with surrounding yourself around like-minded brothers who understand the fear, who understand the fear of the Lord, who keep these commandments to the best of their ability, who know how to rightly divide the word of truth, who know how to have fun and serve the Lord in fun, and they know how to uh, 
had that just balance, like you read about Proverbs the eleventh chapter, and eight, go into the house of mourning, like you read about Ecclesiastes the seventh chapter, right? They know how to go into the house of mourning and be serious, and be about their business, magnifying the Lord's name. You understand? How can you go wrong with that? You gotta understand it's a spirit that's in you that you want to do contrary to that. You're not fearing the Most High when you want to do contrary to you know. Uh, uh, dwelling with godly men Men that keep the commandments It's a spirit on you brother Your sister It's a spirit on you that don't want to allow you to Congregate with these righteous men Who know how to keep the commandments and fear the Lord Right It's a spirit on you Read on Whose mind is according to thy mind And will sorrow with thee If thou shalt miscarry Right so, hey, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing to unify with brothers who are like mine with these scriptures. Like mine in the fear of the Lord. Because didn't the Lord say, didn't the Lord say in Amos, Amos 3 and 3, right? Amos 3 and 3, you only, no, nah, that's not what I want. What I want? What I want? Okay, I want, okay, I read the wrong one. Amos 3 and 3. Can two walk together except they be, except they be agreed, right? And the only way I pe the only thing our people are gonna have to agree on is these laws, statutes, and commandments, and coming back to the Lord, right? We tried Black Lives Matter, we tried Black Panthers, right? We tried various other things. We tried all these other things, but one thing that our people do not want to settle and come back to. Is learning the law, statutes, and commandments of our God and, you know, having faith in our God and literally having faith that a so-called African-American man, probably 6'10", buff as I don't know what, is literally going to park the sky, literally crack the sky and come down out the sky with millions and millions and millions of chariots, so-called UFOs, and one that's probably going to be like the size of five football fields. He's literally going to come out the sky with these chariots and dwell on this earth and slay many of you who do not want to adhere to these words, adhere to the men who want to mm -hmm. rightly divide the word of truth. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is, hey, this is something my people do not just want to comprehend, right? They don't want to love their people. They don't want to love their brothers, right? How can we walk together except we be agreed, right? And the only thing that we are going to have to agree on is the Lord. It's our Lord God. Because, hey, let's read one verse up. Amos 3 and 2. That's a spirit. You only have I known of all the family. Let me read verse 1. Amos 3 and 1. Hear this word, hear this word that the Lord have spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, So Israel, out of all the families, Israel, the family that I brought up out of the land of Egypt. Only Israel was brought up and delivered out of the land of Egypt through those strange calamities, judgments, and wonders through by the hand of Moses. Verse 2. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. Right? So we got to come and realize, like I said earlier, we got to realize the uh, problem. We got to realize the uh, subject at hand. Right, that the Lord put us through these various punishments, right? Serving our enemies, right? In the land of our captivity, uh, various slaveries, right? Uh, evil eyes towards our travel, each other, right? Cursed in the cities, cursed in the fields, right? Uh, not having the ability to uh, think towards a long life because we only know that we're going to live a certain amount of our time. That's a curse, too, right? Yokes of iron upon our neck. Right. And various other curses. Right. Building up houses and not being able to dwell with them, chiefly in the times of slavery. Right. Building up houses for our masters. Right. And various, 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 various other um curses that our people go through. These are iniquities that the Lord put us through because we don't want to unify and come back to the Lord in truth and sincerity and keep these commandments. That's why it's so important for us to unify and for us to agree that we have a God that is mighty and terrible that has judged us for our iniquities, like we just read. You understand? There's no way around it. 
we have to unify. We can't be okay with dwelling, um, you know, separating ourselves, loving our oppressors. It's come time that we love each other. You understand that we separate ourselves. It's about come time for that, right? And that's not a new message, right? You know, uh, Malcolm X preached that. Various other leaders that tried to lead our people have preached segregation and all that kind of stuff. But where they went wrong, uh, the Lord said, you do error not knowing the scriptures. That's what they went wrong there. They did error not knowing the scriptures and following your house shot. It's as simple as that. Let's read this. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and read verse 10. Um, for if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he hath not he have not another to help him up. Right, and this is a cut to you brothers that want to um, do everything on your own, right? You don't need to congregate with brothers. Oh, it's Corona, you know, bit by bit. I don't want to. I don't want to unify. You know, I love y'all, but you know, keyboard, right? Oh yeah, social distance. Woe to him that falleth when he's alone, because he has nobody to help him up, right? Like we've been reading about, you need to seek these counsel of these wise men, right, and unify yourself. How beautiful is it? When brothers dwell together in unity, right? You should be wanting to dwell together with your brothers. Uh, dwell together with your brothers, right? Woe to him that falleth when he's alone. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone, right? If two men lie, if two people, whether it's a man or a woman, or whether it's two men, brothers, or whether it's two women, sisters, right? When they're together, they have heat. But woe to him or he or she that's alone, right? That is not going to have any heat when they separated, right? Now, let's jump into David and Goliath real quick. Let's jump into David and Goliath because it's a point out of this that I want, right? And, I, you know, I feel like a lot of people have heard about David and Goliath, but a lot of people really probably haven't read the actual account. So we're going to get into it. First Kings, right? 17, nope, 1 Samuel. Click on the sword. I want the book of 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 17 chapter. And I'm going to start at verse number 4. 1 Samuel 2, 17 to 4. And there went our champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gad, whose height was six cubits in the, in the span. Right, so you go, you got Goliath, he's a, basically a giant, he's a really, he kind of, you know, he's a tall man. Now, let's jump down to verse number 11, right? So, when Saul and all Israel heard those words with the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. So, I'm going to kind of jump throughout this chapter to just get you the context. Hey, you, I strongly encourage you to read about this count of David versus Goliath. 1 Samuel 17, 1, all the way to verse number 58. Strongly encourage that. Right now, here it is. You got Goliath, right? He kind of talking his ish, right? He kind of boasting himself up, like, "Hey, you pick out one mighty man, and we gonna hash it out like men, right?" And hey, you got Saul and the other Israelites. They like, "Oh man," they kind of afraid, right? Let's jump down to verse twenty. And David rose up early, and this is the point. This is a part of the point I wanted. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took. And went and Jesse as Jesse commanded him, and he came to the trench, as the host was going forth to the flight, but to the fight, and, sh and uh, shouted for the battle. Right. So Jesse commanded him, "Hey, it's time to go to war. You know, it's time to gird up your loins, and gird up your sword, and it's time to go to war." Basically, you can read this account yourself. But Jesse commanded him, "Hey, it's time to get up, and you gotta do what you gotta do." That is an example of. Uh, listening to the counsel of wise men, having faith in the Most High, because here it is: you see your nation going through some perilous times. You got a, you know, you got an army with one giant dude coming up, right? And you, get, hey, it's on you. We commanded you. I charge you. Hey, you got to get up. You got to kind of help us out, David. Right? Hey, I'm on it. Right? I'm on it. The Lord on my side. Right? I'm gonna stand up for my nation. I'm gonna do what I gotta do. I'm gonna go to jail. Right? I'm gonna fight for my brothers. Right? I'm going to drive out X amount of many miles just so my brother can come dwell with unity, right? I'm going to do what I got to do to love my brothers, 
right? I'm going to do what I got to do, whether it's putting my life on the line, right? Or whether it's almost losing all the money in my account. I don't care, right? I got the faith of the Lord in me, the fear of the Lord in me to help out my brothers, right? And that's the same spirit that David was in. You understand? Let's jump down to verse number 24. And it reads, And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. So everybody's afraid of Goliath except for David. Let's uh, skip down to verse 26. And David spake, spake to the man that stood by him, saying, Which shall be done to the man that killeth the Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? Or who is this un uncircumcised Philistine that should uh, defy the armies of the living God? Right, so this is what David said. David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine, and taketh any reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine? So he kind of, David kind of talking his stuff. All right, he like, he like, um, he like, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that could, def that should defy the armies of the living God? What? You saying this Philistine right here is going to defy the armies of the living God? Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Are y'all crazy? Y'all scared of this? Y'all scared of this? Man, what's going to happen for me, man, slaying him, man? Right, let's go ahead and put this in a body bag. I got the Lord on my side, right? You got to be confident in the Lord, right? That's what your faith should be, you know what I'm saying? Loving your brothers and loving your nation that much that you're willing to risk your life, that you, hey, you trust in the Lord so much, you ain't even really worried about it, you know what I mean? That's the kind of spirit that David was in. Now, let's jump down to verse 38, right? So, the point is, you see how much, how much love David had for his nation, right? How much faith David had in the Most High, willing to put his life on the line for his brothers, right? For his brothers that was unified together, he was willing to put himself on the forefront to stand up for his nation, his brothers. That's how much love, that's an account of how much love and faith you got to have for your brother, right? That's the that's the importance of unifying right now while we can, while we don't have to worry about uh, strict, you know, uh, um, harsh war situations and stuff like that. It's easy for us to come together right now, but it's all mental, right? That's why we're in that mental slavery right now, right? And even though Saul and all of them was afraid, what did Saul do? Verse 38, and Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head, and he also armed him with a coat of mail, right? So even though they was all scared and whatnot, right, they still, right, Saul still armored his brother. Right, he still made sure, like, all right, you know, because if you read a couple verses earlier, he was like, David, I don't, you know, I don't know if you can do this bit by bit, and you know, David, he going hard, like, he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it, right? And so, like, all right, he gave him his armor, gave him everything he could, made sure he was straight, he was checking him out, made sure all his stuff straight, right? And that's that love for your brother, right? So you have various, this David and Goliath story, you can give many points out of this, right? But the point I wanted out of this was a. David uh, was uh, wise and listening to the counsel of his uh, other, other elders because David was young, right? He was wise and listening to the counsel of his others, and he realized it was his time to stand up. With, and had a Lord on his side, right? And he had brothers around him to support him, right? Saul gave him his armor, right? Everybody there had to put their faith in him because they were scared, right? And all of them was uh, rejoiced after after David slew Goliath, right? So you can read about that count on your own, mighty precept. But the point I wanted, hey, you see that even though Saul was even um kind of scared or whatever, hey, he gave him his armor. He needed it. Why? Let's read this, Genesis 4 and 9. And the Lord said unto Cain, where is Abel my brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Get yeah, you your brother's keeper, man. Jake said that in the world. Man, I'm my brother's keeper. The difference between this and the world is, hey, if I see you out there, you know what I mean? If I be at the grocery store, how they may be. Hey, and I was just at the mall. I was just at the mall. I was kind of buying some gifts or whatever, right? And I seen a brother. He was kind of, you know, kind of tall or whatever. Don't what kind of walk of life he was on, but he was working at a coffee shop. Literally, right? I just came from uh, buying my gift. I've been in the mall for about an hour. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to walk out, right? And he said, hey, right, turn around. Turn around, I'm like, what's up? Right, and he put out his fist, and he kind of, I mean, he, he uh, 
did the little fist bump or whatever. And I was like, what's it? What's going on? And he said like, nothing. And he didn't really say nothing. And then I looked down, lo and behold, he had his fringes on, man. And I'm like, yeah, hey, that's mighty, brother. I mean, it put a smile on my face. I mean, I'm out the mall by myself, kind of chilling. You know, of course, I got my fringes on. I praise to the most high. Right, I got my fringes on. I see that brother with his fringes on. Hey, and that made me smile. That made me smile because that realized that hey, we unified. And you wanna know you know you know that's a difference. Cause if you if you out in the mall, right, you shopping and you not worried that you gotta keep these commandments and you see a brother, right, you kinda just gonna walk past him like yo, yeah, hey, it's, it's just a brother. Right? But when you magnifying the Lord's name and you keeping these commandments, right, you got your fringes on, you got your Bibles in your pockets, right? You meditating on precepts wherever, wherever thou goest, right? Keeping these commands to the best of your ability, right? And you see another brother pass with them fringes on. He got them fringes on. What? What? And it's a pocket fringe in his pocket. What? Shut around. Mighty brother. That's love. That's literal love, right? And it's no, you know, it's it, that's love. That's the point I'm going to get out of that, right? You got to be willing to do whatever you can do for your brother to lift him up, right? Because the Lord said this. This is the book of Matthew. Chapter 5 and verse 43. And it reads, Ye have heard that it have been that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. Right? That's the point that I'm getting at. It's time that we love our neighbors, man. It's time that we love each other. Now, literal love. That 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 word love is kind of like um dried out. Like it's kind of played out. But that's literal love towards your neighbor, right? No matter if you got to um, drive your last miles in your tank and you got to fill it up. No matter if you got to loan them your last, you, you got to loan them $50, but you only got 100 in your account. No matter if you got, um, if you haven't ate all day and he hasn't ate in two days and you got to loan him some food, no matter how hungry you is. No matter if you only got two Bibles and you got to loan him one because your brother got none. You got to love your neighbor, man. Literally. That's how important this is. You have to literally love your neighbor. Why? Because it's a commandment. Let's read it again. Uh, Matthew 5 and 43. And this is in red leather, so you better take it serious. Matthew 5 and 43. Ye have heard that it have been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. That's what Yahweh shall literally say, right? That's what, hey, if he said that, you best believe that he was walking it. Yahweh shall wasn't no hypocrite. Right? He was loving his neighbors and hating his enemies. And that's the same thing we got to do. Right? Adhere to the counsels of these wise men. Rightly divide the word of truth. Love your neighbors and forsake your enemies. Right? Uh, uh, um, adhere to these wise counsels. Surround yourself with godly men and know how to keep the commandments. Right? Be that bigger man and say, hey, that's not had no division towards us. Um, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, 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 realizing that the most high loves when brothers dwell in unity together, especially when it's around righteous men, right? Galatians 4 and verse number, Galatians 5 and verse number 14, Galatians 5 and 14, for all the law is fulfilled in one, all the law is fulfilled in one, even is this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Brother, that's that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's mighty, brother. Don't like you know, you might have heard that a million times, but you gotta examine yourself and see if you're really loving your neighbor. Right? If a hey, if we kind of if we disagree on certain things, hey, as long as you know you gotta keep the commandments, you understand. You believe in Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh or you believe in the Most High God of Israel in the name of His Son, right? And you understand that you gotta keep these commandments and love your neighbor. You understand? Hey, you my bro we're neighbors, brother. We're the same nation. I'm gonna love you, right? As long as you have these things in your mind, right? I'm gonna show you the the best amount of love I can. And maybe if you're not, if you're in the world and you kind of don't want to listen to this video, however you want to carry about about it, hey. You're still my neighbor. I'm, you're still my neighbor, and I'm still gonna love you, brother. We're all the same nation, brother. We we have to love each other. We have to do this in order for us to rise. You understand? Because that's how it's gonna be in the kingdom. Let's get Ezekiel thirty-seven. Right? Can these bones live? Ak. Right? 
Ezekiel 37 and 21. Because this, if we, when we unify, that's the only way that this is going to be possible. Ezekiel 37, and I'm going to start at verse number 21. Oh, I'm going to start at verse 20 so I can give you the context. And the sticks where one thou riddest shall be in thy hand before thy eye. So you have one stick for the southern kingdom of Israel, uh, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and you have one stick for the northern kingdom, right? The other ten tribes. You had one you had one stick with the southern kingdom, you understand? And then you had the other stick with the other yeah, with the other uh ten tribes, right? And then the Lord basically commanded it was a vision that Ezekiel was having for him to put these sticks together, some symbolizing the unity of the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. As in there's no more so called northern kingdom, there's no more so called southern kingdom, because we'll all be one. You understand? Let's read on. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. Right? So this is what we got to dwell in unity together for. So the Most High can gather us together, and we'll, no matter what land we're in, no matter if we're in France, Africa, America, Southern America, uh, Canada, Alaska, you know, whatever. So the Lord can gather us together and set us in our own land so we can love each other. Put up, put aside all our differences, right? Adhere to the wise counsel of our judges, right? Follow Yahweh Shah and keep his commandments and love each other. That's a beautiful thing. I don't want nothing other than, I don't, there's literally nothing in life that I seek for more than the most high gathering us as a nation. The most high willing we, uh, you know, me and you watching this video, everybody watching this video, that I'm talking to, most high willing, we all get the kingdom, right? And we all is dwelling together in unity. Read on. And I will make them as one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be to them all, and they shall and they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. And that's a very beautiful thing, right? And we let's close up. All right, I got. Let's get the book of Ephesians. See if I can close this up before an hour. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. And number Ephesians 4 and uh verse number 13, right? And it reads thus: Till we all come in the unity of the faith, right? Like I said earlier, this is the only thing that we're gonna be able to, we're gonna have to agree on, is coming together in the unity of faith. And the knowledge of the Son of God, who is who is who? Yahweh Shah. Well Malaki Yahweh Shah. You understand? That man who is worthy to be praised, uh, uh, glorified, and exalted above all forevermore. Right? Read on. Unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Hamashiach. Right. That son of God, we're gonna all have to come in one accord and exalt him and his father. Right, and we're gonna to have to all come in one accord, and that's gonna to have to be the one thing that we agree on. The one thing that we have to go agree on is to acknowledge that he did this. Matthew chapter that's not what I wanted. I put the wrong one in here. Right? We're gonna to have to all come and and be on one accord and acknowledge that this literally happened. Matthew eleven and five. The blind receive their sight. And the lame walk, and the leapers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. We all have to come on one accord and actually believe and realize that a so-called African-American black man healed the blind, uh, allowed crippled people to walk, right? Had the gospel, he preached the gospel to the poor, right? He healed the sick. Literally, you know what I'm saying? Heal women from off of their uh flowers and all of the many other uh um miracles that he performed, we literally have to all come in together and and I mentioned earlier that one miracle that he gonna perform very soon, right? Cracking that sky. And that's a very fearful thing. But we all gonna have to come into unity and realize that this is our king, this is our Lord, right? This is our master that we all have to obey, right? We all have to submit ourselves to Yahweh Bashim and Shah, keep these commandments and reverence our God. That's the only way we're going to be able to rise as a nation. I promise you, 
I promise you 100% that's the only way we're going to be able to rise as a nation. I promise you it is. Let's go back to Ephesians 4 and verse 14. Then we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie wait to deceive. Right, since so once we unify together in the name of our Lord, right, in the name of the Lord's Son, right, that's the only way we're going to be able to be unmovable. That's the only way we're going to be able to be uh, um, have this strong nation that's unified. And it's like, I'm kind of using this because that's what it's going to be like. Like, we are that rock that's going to be the salt of the earth. Right? I don't know how else to explain it. That's the only way we're going to be able to be that strong nation that nobody can touch at all. Against the servants of God shall not a dog move his tongue. Right? And the only way we're going to be able to be able to magnify uh, um, the Lord's name to the best of our ability as a nation is if we come to back, if we come back together in the Lord's name. You understand? Let's read on. Uh, verse number 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Hamashiach, right? Because we have to speak the truth in all things. The truth is not always going to be things that you thought to be right the whole time. The truth is not going to always be things that you just want to hear. The truth is literally going to be the words that you hear and be like, oh, man, you know, that's what the Lord said. Hey. Let's make haste. That's the truth. The truth is what the Lord said, how the Lord walked, and what we got to do to magnify the Lord's name. That is the truth. You understand? Let's read on. From, from whom the whole body filthily joined together and, come back and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto unto the edifying of itself in love right so basically what they're saying we're gonna have to magnify each body part whether you the fingernail whether you the toenail whether you the elbow joint whether you the uh, spinal cord whether you the brain the eyes the nose the mouth the teeth the ears the chest the nipples the anything we're all gonna have to come back together and start functioning as that one body and opening up these scriptures, right? As one body, edifying each other, rightly dividing the word of truth, not being proud, being a bigger man, loving your neighbor and hating your enemy. Uh, what else we go with? Um, uh, realizing these righteous accounts of men judging with the fear of the Most High, fearing the Most High, keeping the commandments. And you're going to have to do all of these things for us to unify and come back together. You understand? That's how important this is. That's the only way our nation is going to be able to rise as one is if we come back together and we love each other. That's how important it is. You understand? Love thy neighbor. That's that term. People have kind of washed it out because they don't really uh, analyze themselves and apply that scripture. You understand? And with that being said, you know, I, I pray thee was edified. You know what I'm saying? I, I just hope you was motivated to. Go out and do a prayer for your brother. Go hit your brother up. Say, hey, let's pray together. Hey, you you got a Bible at home? You know, I've been thinking about been thinking about getting one, right? Let's order one on Amazon at the same time. Let's hop in these scriptures, right? That would be the righteous. That would be a righteous act to do after that, right? If you don't got no Bible sitting right next to you right now within reach, hey, go get one and start reading it. Start praying, right? Start doing these righteous acts that please the Most High. That's the only way that the Lord is going to help us in the situation that we're in, right? Every day might not be the worst, but, hey, we still in this land getting shot down by the police, right? We still in this land can't build nothing because we know the white man is going to throw it down. So the only thing that we're going to be able to build is our faith in the Lord, keeping these law statutes and commandments. So, hey, the Lord fight for us. And with that being said, Shalom.